Hello, this video continues looking at the 2006 Oxford PAT. So I did section A in the previous video. This is section B in the physics part of the paper. So we're on to the longer questions now. So here we are, question 11. The diagram sh below shows a circuit in which the bulb lights up with normal brightness. OK, so we've got one cell, one bulb, and that's normal. In the circuits below, the bulb and all cells have the same specifications as the bulb and cell shown above. All right, determine whether the bulbs marked by the letters in these circuits are brighter than normal, normal, dimmer than normal, or off. OK. Right, so let's go through each one then. So we've started off with, I'm just going to draw it over here. We started with one cell and one bulb, since it's gone off the top of the screen. So we started off with that. We've now added in the second bulb. And it, it can be useful thinking of these circuits as well. What's changed each time you move from one to another? It can be easier to see what's gone on then. So in this case, we're going to get half the potential difference over bulb a so it's going to be dimmer because it's sharing the potential with the other bulb now we're moving on to this circuit where we've now added in a cell so we're doubling up the emf so that halved pd is now going to be doubled back up to normal so b will be normal now, what have they changed in the third one? Right, so all they've done in this one is stick a bulb through the middle here. That's a change to this second picture. So nothing's changed at all for C. We've still got that outer loop. So C is still going to be normal. The, the thing with D is if you think of the, what's going on with the potential as you go around the circuit, say we'd marked on the potential on this first uh, well, on this second one here. So say we'd started on that corner and said, well, that was zero. So we've gone up one through that cell, up one through that cell. Then we go, we've got two that we have to lose on the way round. So we're going to go down to one here. So that's our sort of, you know, relative potential as we're moving around the circle uh, circuit in uh, conventional current direction. So if we've got that and you think well if they added in something across here as they have done in the middle of this picture well they're joining it from one to one there's no potential difference across this at all it's not affecting anything it's just joining two places of the same potential so d is going to be off because you have to have a potential difference in order to have the current flow so that fits in quite nicely it's a quicker way of thinking about it if we're going to now look at E and F, well, E is exactly the same position as A is in. So we've gone back to this first picture and we've added in you know, a bulb across there. That then gives us this one. So F looks exactly like our starting point because we have to have, you know, with Kirchhoff's laws, every loop has to be using all of the, um, uh, all of the EMF, all of that potential has to be used up. So F is going to be exactly the same, whereas E is in the same position as A. So E is going to be dimmer and F is going to be normal. This is all going swimmingly. Then we've got this last one, which looks a little bit complicated, but this is just the variation on the second circuit. So we've got two cells with two bulbs. If you ignore G, it's exactly the same as the second one. And then they've put G in in parallel. So it's like just having a bulb stuck across this way on this second circuit, whichever way you want to wire it up. So H is going to be exactly the same as B, which is normal. And uh, G is going to be, well, this is a new setup. We've got one bulb with double cell. So G is going to be brighter for the first time. We've actually got one which is going to be brighter than normal because it's going to have double the potential difference on it. So looking at these as variations on simpler ones can certainly help, particularly if you're looking at this circuit or even this one. Yeah, it can be uh, easier to unpick that way. All right, so let's finish that one. Question 12. 
While exploring the North Pole of Mars, an astronaut stumbles into a cave containing a pool of glowing liquid and a collection of coloured cubes. Lacking any proper instruments, she uses her spare oxygen tank as a measure and determines that a red cube and a green cube are as long as a tank, right? So red plus green equals T for tank. Two green cubes and a blue cube, so two green plus blue, twice as long as the tank. Then red cube and a blue cube are as long as two green cubes. R plus B equals 2G. What else have we got? Red cube, a green cube and a blue cube weigh the same as the tank. Right, so we'll, I'll put that a little bit separately. So the mass of a red plus a mass of a green plus the mass of a blue is equal to the mass of the tank. All right, so that's covered that one as well. So we've done all of those. Also tries dropping the cubes into the pool and notices that they all float with half their volume exposed. OK, on returning to base, she discovers that her tank is 35 centimetres. Right, so we've now got that T equals 35, if we keep everything in centimetres. Mass is 20 kilograms. I'll make a note of that. Mass of the tank is 20 kilograms. OK, so we've done that. We've done that. Find the density of the glowing liquid. Right. OK, so let's say something about density to pull all of that out. So they all float with half their volume exposed. Right. So density of red equals density of blue equals density of green. And that equals uh, half the density of the liquid because they're only, yeah, we got half of their volume exposed. And what do we have to work out? The density of the liquid. So what we're trying to find out is the density of the liquid. Right, well, we're clearly going to have to solve these simultaneous equations. What have we got? So we've got four, un well, three unknowns because we now know what T is. So let's double the first one. Let's try and get rid of maybe, yeah, let's get rid of these Gs then, shall we? So let's double the first one. So 2R plus 2G equals, oh, it's also, yeah, getting us the same T as well. That's really going to help, equals 70. And we've got 2G plus B equals 70. So we're saying that 2R equals B. So that's good, which means that we're going to have 2R equals B. So we've got 2R equals b so we've got 3r looking at the bottom one here putting it into the third one 3r equals 2g so we're gonna have oh and 2g plus b is 70 because we've got that in the second equation so we can say that 5r equals 70 so we've got that r is 14 centimeters which means that G is going to be equal to 3 over 2 of that, so 21 centimetres. And B is going to be equal to double it, so 28 centimetres. Right, so that's come out quite nicely. So we've got all of those. Now we need to say something about the densities then. Um, so the mass of yeah, all of these cubes added up together Right, so we can get the, well, that's going to be pretty horrible, isn't it? So if you multiply each one of these volumes by the density and add them all up, we're going to get the mass of 20, because we're saying that that total mass of 20 is equal to the density of all of these things, multiplied by the volume plus the volume plus the volume of each one of R, G and B because they're all going to be masses then, aren't they? Density times volume. So we're going to want to div divide everything because we want to get this density. That's the thing we don't know. So if we do 20 divided by these volumes added together, that's going to give us the density. And then we need to double that. So our row L we're running out of space significantly here. So let's try going here. So row L, I'm going to have to do this on a few lines, is going to be 20 divided by 
uh, let's put these into um, when they're multiples of seven, which will help. And we're going to have 10 to the minus six on everything because they're centimeters being cubed up. So if we want to get them in meters, we're going to end up having this 10 to the minus six. But let's go with, um, so we've got a two times seven cubed, three times seven all cubed, and a four times seven all cubed. So we can take that seven cubed out of everything. So we'll have two cubed plus three cubed plus four cubed multiplied by seven cubed. And we've got that 10 to the minus six. So let's put, uh, well, I'll leave it down here. It'll end up being a 10 to the six at the top in a minute. So let's try and figure all of that out. So we've got two times 10 to the seven on top, two times 10 to the seven. So that's our 20 gives us one zero and then six more from this 10 to the minus six divided by seven cubed is 343. And then we've got multiplied by eight plus 27 plus 64, which adds up to 99. So that is two times 10 to the seven divided by, so three, four, three, zero, zero minus three, four, three, which is two times 10 to the seven divided by three, three, nine, five, seven. Okay, so, so far, so good. And we want to double that to get the density of the liquid, because that's the thing that we're after. So we're going to have the, the density of the liquid. Um, oh, I, I should have put in the, I've been working out density here. I should have put in the times two right at the beginning. So that'd be times two, times two times two, I'd wrote, written down that I was working out density of the liquid, but actually I was working out density of the cube. So I'd forgotten to put the times two in. So that's fine. So we just need to, yeah, put that into the calculator. Seeing as I've got this sort of close with it, I don't, I might do a, like a two significant figure, just calculate this by hand. So we've got four times 10 to the seven, four times 10 to the seven divided by, let's say three, four, zero, zero, zero. So let's say we made that a 40 and made that a six and then got rid of one, two, three zeros to make that a three. So we'd have 20 over 17 times 10 to the three, um, which is gonna be, around about so you're going to have one and then three seventeenths so that would be uh, 30 over 17 say one seven divided by 10 so let's say 1.17 let's round it to 1.2 times 10 to the three uh, just to make it more uh, believable to two significant figures, and that is in, was it kilograms per meter cubed? Kilograms per meter cubed, because we've got a um, density. So let's just double check that my sums have come out sensibly. I'll put it into the calculator just to make sure I go back to this stage, put it in the calculator. And yeah, it comes out at 1178 kilograms per meter cubed. So they were reasonable numbers to play around with to just work to these two significant figures as I've just given us this 35 and this 20. We don't want to get carried away in the accuracy. So yeah, uh, 1,200 kilograms per meter cubed. Yeah, that, that was a, an involved question. There was nothing particularly, I suppose, conceptually difficult about it, but there's a lot to keep track of there, a lot of information. So you just need to make sure that you're organized. I mean, I have to splatter everything across the screen here because I don't have much space to write it out. It's the limitation of doing this on a video. But if you lay everything out neatly as you're going through step by step on the uh, through all of this, then yeah, just don't rush anything. Don't jump too far ahead. Uh, just, um, yeah, take one step at a time. Right, so moving on to question 13, the graph below shows the velocity of a rocket as a function of time. 
what has happened at point x so let's take a closer look at this graph first of all then so we've got velocity increasing up here it's all positive and we've got time yeah fair enough so it's going up to some maximum velocity and then we've got this constant negative acceleration so what's happened at point x well you could say all manner of things about that so we could say well it's the maximum velocity um so that's what's happened at point x so it's probably when the engine stops um you know if the engine was still going then you'd expect the velocity to keep on increasing so let's say that when is the acceleration of the rocket a maximum suggest an explanation for this so the acceleration is the gradient so we've got maximum gradient just before we get to x so just before x so why are we going to get this increasing gradient here why is the acceleration getting greater probably because the fuel is decreasing so the fuel's going down then the mass is going down in which case we're going to get a greater acceleration for the same force um yeah so acceleration goes up then we've got describe the subsequent motion of the rocket so we've got a constant deceleration but i'm going to go with constant constant negative acceleration because of the issues with using the word deceleration so this is probably going to be um you know, around about free fall that's what we'd expect maybe with this gradient it is going to be uh, a, a minus g gradient that we've got on that how in principle would you determine from this graph the maximum height reached by the rocket so the maximum height that's going to be our greatest displacement so a maximum displacement is the area under the graph uh, so we're going to have to extend because remember it's still going upwards although we we've got this deceleration this negative acceleration here is still moving upwards we've still got positive velocity here so we need to extend the graph back to the x-axis and then work out the area underneath so we've got to do two things so extend graph to x-axis and then work out the area then area and that will give us that displacement so yeah it's a, it's a little bit vague i suppose when they're saying you know well what's happened here well there's a lot of things that could have happened there but i'm going to go with you can certainly say that it's got the maximum velocity okay you it's a reasonable guess to say that the engine has been stopped but whether that's exactly what they're getting at there. I mean, it's only one mark, so I would expect you don't have to say that much in order to pick up the mark. So that's the three sort of medium questions that they have on this. You, This is back in the days where you have the, the long physics question as well. So I'm going to do that one in another video to separate it from these.